I feel like we've all been prepared for this moment. So I definitely had a very unusual upbringing. Um, I've experienced things that most human beings will never experience in their lives. And I've been through the darkest of the darkest of the darkest of the darkest in so many ways. And growing up, ever since I was a child, I've, I've always known, I've always known what I was here for, just like many people here today. Um, and today I'm able to see clearly how every single one of my experiences were specifically tailor-made to help me become who I am today. And who I am today is a guide and a teacher and a way shower, just like many of you that are here joining forces today in this brand new era of awakening. So yes, I'm blessed to come from a long lineage of astrologers, at least four generations back. <laughs> so I call myself the fourth generation astrologer, but at the very least. And I say that astrology runs deep, not only in my lineage, but also in my soul. I've been doing this for many lifetimes. So I'm blessed to be able to understand this language in the way that I do, which is very unique. And I have a very objective perspective, whether I'm looking at an individual chart or whether I'm looking at a general astrological event, um, I can map out the energies. I can understand their message. I can understand the synchronicities of all the connections and what they are pointing to next. So I'm blessed today to have a global community of astrology lovers and lovers of life, as I call it. And together we are navigating this transition. So I'm here to use astrology today and every day. I use astrology as a tool, ultimately a tool for the most important thing that we are all here for, which is evolution. This is beyond good or bad. Good and bad are paradigms in this dimension to help us with our ultimate goal, which is evolution. So I use astrology and many other tools to help you understand the greater perspective and your role in this cosmic transition. This is your evolutionary process in action. So thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for opening your hearts and your minds as well to receive. I always say that whenever I speak, whether it's in a personal session or in a conference like this, or whenever I speak, it's much more than the information that is being delivered. This is also an experience of activation. And you may feel that right now, even as I speak. You may feel your ears picking up in, on new frequencies, your body feeling new sensations. And really what's happening is your cells are becoming alive with the truth. So I'm here today to give you some perspective through astrology, which is one of my languages. And I'm here to help you understand the um, energies of this year that we're in and ultimately beyond, beyond this year, moving forward. Where are we going next? Where is all this leading us to? And I myself spent such a long time asking myself that. I know that when COVID, the news of COVID broke out and came out and everybody and so many, even spiritual leaders and teachers, so many of us were wondering what's what's happening? What, what's going on? <laughs> what's next? And I myself asked that question because I have many, many, many people from all around the world and students and mentors that I lead and guide. And I remember asking, what, what am I supposed to tell people? <laughs> what's happening? What's happening? And so it really became my soul's mission from that point on to really dive deep into the, the ultimate perspective and the greater picture of what's happening here. So in all my studies and researches and moments of contemplation and my internal work that I do as well, uh, directly with Gaia and other stages of life and dimensions, I can see clearly more and more and more and more and more that this is the moment that we've been waiting for. This is the point of our trajectory that we've been preparing for all along. This is really that point in history that has been prophesied about, that many 
scriptures and stories and even movies have been created around. This is really a point in time that has been considered so blessed and so pivotal for humanity's evolution. Because this is where we are taking a massive quantum leap. This is bigger than most of us even have an idea right now of how big this is. So we're having what I've been calling this transition, and it's a period. It's a period. This transition that we are literally moving from one reality into another. Now, you may have noticed how words like ascension and higher self and all these, these, these names and words have, become, have been becoming more and more common over the years. And there's so much hype around the different dimensions and higher selves and ascension especially. And when people ask me that, I always like to answer with my very practical perspective that ascension is nothing more, nothing less than the ascension of consciousness. This is what we have to keep in mind because many people are, you know, expecting some extraordinary event. And obviously, cosmic family is coming more and more to us, and we are more and more opening up to embrace them as part of ourselves. And there's so much happening, and there's so much shifting and changing. But the truth is that we are here on planet Gaia for a reason. And we're not going anywhere. We're going to stay right here <laughs> until the job is done. And there's a lot of work to be done here. There is a lot of work to be done. And it all begins within. It all begins with ourselves. So this is, in truth, the true era of awakening. And what we are awakening here is to a new stage of spirituality, a new stage of truth, and a new stage of life as we know it. So everything is shifting. Everything is shifting. And I can break this down and map it out month by month, week by week, which I do in, you know, in my community and but. The truth is that we are looking here at a great transition, regardless of the events that are happening. This is set in place, divinely orchestrated, so that we can cross this threshold. This threshold that has been marked in the cosmic clock. Everything in order has, in the universe, has order. That's why we have mathematics. That's why we have geometry. All of these things keep creation in motion, in perfect order. And so when we understand this order, this is not about miracles or mysteries or woo-woo systems. This is just learning how to read how I, this is how I tell my, my family and, you know, friends that don't understand astrology. I just say, it's just a computer, think of it as a computer program. That's what astrology is. It's a computer program. And it just happens that I know how to read that computer program. <laughs> So we can take all the woo stuff out of it. And we're just reading the computer program that's showing us this cosmic clock, these junctures in time. And so this, this is no longer about having the luxury of saying, I don't want, or I don't believe, or I don't agree. This is happening so fast. This is, we are completely shifting the way that we are viewing reality, the, the way that we are viewing ourselves and of course, society as a consequence. And this is why so many people um, have not even been identifying so much anymore with their old lives, their old circumstances, friendships, partners, because everything is shifting. And so it begins with this ability to shift the way that we see things. And the very first step is to be okay with the fact that things are different. Don't try to resist or hold on to things if they're not working anymore, because this is one of the big, big pivotal moments is where we need to embrace the shift. We have no other option. This is part of the cosmic um, 
uh, how do you say, like the schedule, the cosmic schedule. So we're just showing up for it and we are here to support this transition. And this is why also many of us are uh, also awakening to new gifts, new abilities, new discoveries about ourselves, which is very exciting. So the first thing I want to point out here astrologically in this talk is the fact that the planet Pluto is entering Aquarius. So many of you may have heard the term, the age of Aquarius. Yes, by now, many of you may have heard the age of Aquarius. And we have all the ages, okay? You can think of all the, the 12 signs as energies that originally come from a group of stars called constellations. And these groups of stars, they shine their light the same way that the sun shines its light on Earth and has a massive impact on our earth. The same way you can think of an infinite amount of stars together, shining their light together under a specific frequency that creates a theme, like what we know as the sign of Aries, the sign of Taurus, the sign of Gemini. You know, the light from these, these stars, they come into our atmosphere very purposefully. And there's a very beautiful mathematical calculation that we use to determine when our earth, and it's a very specific point, it's considered the starting point of the entire zodiac, and where this beginning point as it pertains to us relates to the cosmos as everything is in transition and evolving and moving. So this particular point of entrance, the beginning stage of it all, it takes about 2000 years for it to move through one full constellation. And so this is what we call the ages. And this is just a natural pattern of evolution of Gaia and of all of life on her. So we go through these 2,000 years of evolution, and it just so happens to be that we are right at that cusp, leaving one age and entering another. I mean, we're so blessed to be out of all the, the 2,000 years that we could have been here, and many of us have been here, but we're here now at this final cusp between the old age of Pisces and moving into the age of Aquarius. So this in and of itself is a fascinating talk and study that we can dive deep into to understand more. But to keep this in, in, in this flow and this train of, of thought that we are looking at this 2024 year ahead, we're going to get now another layer of this because these energies, they never come alone and they never come at once especially when it's something so big like this, we are looking at a, a massive transition. So many different alignments, and you can think of this as, there are many different stages, but one of the pivotal stages to init initiate this was the 2020 COVID explosion. What was that? That was nothing more, nothing less than a catalyst. COVID was just a catalyst to literally stop us all in our tracks and say that part of life is done. <laughs> Everybody go to your homes, have some time out, take a deep breath, because from this point on, everything is changing. I remember when the news of COVID first came out in 2020, and I had, of course, many friends and loved ones and everybody calling me and asking me as an astrologer what I thought about it. And I remember at the time the news was saying, you know, everybody stay in your homes for two weeks. And it was such a big deal. Two weeks. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and everybody was like, no, in two weeks, everything's going to go back to normal. And I remember looking at the chart and saying, it hasn't even begun. <laughs> we'll be lucky if this is done in a year. <laughs> I remember looking at the astrology and saying, I don't know what's happening, but this is not going anywhere. As a matter of fact, that was the beginning of the end. And 
a very necessary catalyst to stop humanity in our tracks. From what? The previous age, which has been the age of Pisces. Now, the interesting thing is that the archetype of Pisces in astrology is related with many things like spirituality, which is why in these last 2,000 years, we had 2,000 years to awaken to ourselves as spiritual beings. This is this wasn't the case in the ages before that, but now we are awakening, awakening to ourselves as spiritual beings, starting with the birth of Christ, which was the beginning of the age of Pisces. And so with that, we had the development of religions and all these different types later down the exploration of drugs and music and sex and all these different ways to start to understand ourselves as spirit. And this is this this was humanity evolving, understanding that we're spirit through the age of Pisces. And so we needed a god. We needed angels, we needed things to pray to, and that was our stage of evolution. Um, but the Pisces energy is also associated with dreams and sleeping. Did you know that? So in many ways, we are waking up from the Piscean dream. We are leaving the Piscean dream and entering Aquarius, and Aquarius is a totally different energy. Aquarius is literally about waking up because the energy of Aquarius in astrology has to do with radical thinking. Aquarius is associated with the, the higher mind, so much so that Aquarius is the sign of the genius, the intellectual. It's all about using the faculties of awareness to reach that state of enlightenment Okay, at its best, at its best, Aquarius is where we receive, we achieve enlightenment. This is why the words like awakening are so strong right now. This is because we're literally having a new level of God awakening within us in human form. So we couldn't jump to, to this knowing from where we were before the age of Pisces, we needed to go through the age of Pisces to understand ourselves and to develop this awareness of spirit, that there is more than just our physical senses. And so we, we came all this way, you know, we came all this way to where we now realize that it's not about a god or an avatar or a master or a guru or even a teacher, but it really is about the individual awakening to our sovereign, godlike self. And, and so in many ways, this is the return home. This is the return home. And it's so powerful. So this is why many people now, including in society and in the world, are beginning a stage of rebellion. And this is where Aquarius is also associated with chaos and rebellion. Why? Because it's through the chaos and through the rebellion, through the disruption, that we then dare to be more. We then dare to step into new radical truths. If you have a strong Aquarius in your chart, if you know your chart or if you know you have a strong Aquarius energy in some way, you will identify yourself to these traits. Aquarius, people that have strong Aquarius in them, they are not here to follow. Absolutely not. As a matter of fact, they are usually considered the aliens of society. And how interesting that the energy of Aquarius is quite literally associated with aliens. So people with strong Aquarians, they do feel very often like the outcasts or the aliens of society, and they will either rebel themselves and remove themselves from others in society and groups and just be loners until they can awaken their own individual independent thinking. And then they will come back at their best to catalyze change in their circles, in their groups, in their companies, in their business, in places of the world, because the energy of Aquarius is designed to think outside the box. 
That's why we need the rebellion of Aquarius. We need the chaos of Aquarius. We need the independent energies of being a loner. Because Aquarius is about stepping out from the crowd to think different. Because Aquarius is the one responsible to bring the new solutions from the future into society today. So if our planet is now aligning with this influx of cosmic energy, these suns that are emanating the frequencies of Aquarius for our next stage of evolution, we should all be asking ourselves, what is humanity ready for next? What am I? ready for next. And this is going to be completely different than it ever has been. So we have all these different stages of how the transition occurs and every astrological alignment. And I spoke briefly about the 2020, how that was the beginning of the end, massive catalyst. And we've had other key, very key, very, very rare alignments that have been indicating new beginning, new beginning, new beginning, new beginning, along with the eclipses and so many other astrological events that we are understanding more and more that astrology is not a woo-woo science, okay? Astrology is literally a very powerful way of understanding our place in the cosmos. So you can think of it as watching the news or tuning into what's happening in the world. And when you tune into astrology, when you have a good mouthpiece, a good channel that is understanding and interpreting these coordinates, these alignments in the right way, through wisdom, not just knowledge, but wisdom as well, I recommend that you listen because this is the cosmic guidance coming to us of what we're being asked to look at next, to focus on next. So one of the pivotal energies that this entire year is revolving around is the planet Pluto that is entering Aquarius. So we talked about Aquarius as being a part of the new age that we're entering. And this is the bigger cycle of 2000 years, if you will. So I have here the, the big chunk of 2000 years. This is a big window. But in that big window of 2000 years, many, 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 many other phases happen. So Pluto is one of our planets that he's the slowest moving planet and all the planets, they will go around the Zodiac and all the planets have their turn and all the 12 signs, including Aquarius. And so the planet Pluto will take about 250 years to go around the Zodiac and reach the same point as he was before. And so in this case, Pluto is now entering Aquarius quite literally only a few days. We're only a few days away from this. So this is extremely important information. And we haven't seen this energy in 248 years. This is also synchronizing with a very powerful event that ha also happened about the same time, which was when the USA was given birth, when we signed the Declaration of Independence and what a powerful event that was. And so this all happened at around the same time. So this is also marking the beginning. You may have heard this term before, Pluto return. The USA's Pluto return, who here has heard of that? If you haven't, I will explain very briefly. Like I said, it takes Pluto 200, about 250 years to go all the way around and reach the same point in the Zodiac. This particular point that he was at was the same point that he was when we were signing the Declaration of Independence. This is the same point, 27 to 29 Capricorn. Okay, 27 is where he was at when we signed the Declaration of Independence. 29 is where the progressed uh, 
Pluto for the, the chart for the country is. So we really have been in this return, which means closing a full 250 year cycle of evolution for this country. Whenever we have a return of a planet, a Saturn return, a solar return, a Venus return, a Pluto return, which is so rare, we are closing that cycle and we're beginning a new one. So feel into this for a moment because we haven't had this opening since this country signed the Declaration of Independence. And this particular closing of the cycle is in regard to Pluto, which is about the sole urge for transformation in this lifetime. It's not even a desire. You, I used to say the soul's desire for transformation. I'm like, no, desire is way too soft for Pluto. Pluto has an uncontrollable, unstoppable urge for transformation. That's why Pluto is so intense. So the fact that Pluto is beginning now a new 250-year cycle at this pivotal stage of humanity in our evolution, it's so exciting because we are at this incredible juncture with having a clean slate. In many ways, okay, there is a clean slate because we have been, the last two years actually have all been about the closing of lifetimes of karma. That's why we've been having such intense dynamics in relationships, especially. We've been closing lifetimes of contracts. I've been supporting thousands of people for the last two years with this. The last two years have been all about this. The closing of lifetimes of karmic cycles. Why? Because we're cleaning the slate. We're not going to be doing karma anymore. Karma is not going to be a thing of the age of Aquarius. It's going to be a totally different model. It's a totally different reality. So we have to, we have to clean this up. We have to even settle debts, um, learn lessons, make choices, decisions, because we're all moving on. And I'm sharing this to give you hope that everything has been exactly perfect. Everything. The last two years have been so intense. I know when COVID came out and everybody was thinking that 2020 was the big shift. And I was like, mm -mm. <laughs> wait till 2023, like wait till July to September of 2023. That, and honestly, that was the darkest of the darkest that I personally have seen. Um, I'm not, I haven't looked at the forever and ever, but I do look at chunks of time when I, when I'm studying astrology and I'm looking at the, the messages coming in and, I'm like, if we can make it through 2023, we can do anything. <laughs> and I was literally just encouraging my community and, and really just there with them. I have this beautiful mentorship program where we're every month we're checking in with what's happening now. What's the guidance for the next week, for the next month? And I will tell you the same way I tell to them, I am not going anywhere. We're all holding hands and we're doing this together. I'm using my gifts. We're all using our gifts to raise each other in this new stage of evolution. And don't lose sight. We are crossing this threshold. So 2023 was definitely one of the darkest, if not the darkest moment there of this transition. And one of the reasons was because of the lifetimes of karma and karmic contracts ending. And this was displayed all throughout the astrology of 2022 and 2023. That's what the entire 2022 and 2023 was all about. It was that pivotal moment of soul contracts ending, karma ending, people moving on, people transitioning in every possible way because the script is changing. And I can say this with confidence because not only I can read the messages from the stars, but I'm also blessed to work with hundreds of people from around the world. And I look at their charts and I see the same message evolving through each chart. At this stage, I am just the humble witness and messenger of it all. I am just in awe, like, this is way beyond me. I'm just, I look at each chart and each soul and I see the same energy. We're working with the same energy that's coming into the planet and how that is evolving through each chart in such a unique way. 
and paving and preparing for every stage of the evolution. So I've been referring to this as 2020 to 2023 was the first stage. Okay. You can look at this all together as safely a good solid 10 years. Okay. We're looking here at least at the end of this decade of like just pure. This is all about just letting the old go as fast as we can. Because the faster it goes, the faster we can bring the new in. Okay. So don't try to hold on. Even things like trying to help people that have already made their choices or convince others. And sometimes even be out there raising our voices. Sometimes it can even be a waste of energy. So let's be very mindful of where to really focus our energy on what matters now. Letting what needs to go to go. Letting the people that need to move on to move on. Not being even watching the news. I mean, that's such an old. <laughs> I, I feel like I laugh every time I talk about. I always tell people, guys, let's remember. Don't even listen to the news. Don't feed that. Now when I say I start laughing because it just seems so obvious. I feel like for all of us, it's just like so obvious. It's so obvious. So let all that go. That's not where the real news is at. Find your communities because the acceleration is going to start to come now faster than we can keep up with. So the second stage of this transition is from 2024 to 2026. 2024 to 2026 is where we see the very, very beginning, the very first few signs of the new coming in. And this is beyond exciting because we haven't had this yet. I remember last year, so many people were so excited with plans and new beginnings and moving on and starting new ventures and starting new businesses. And I counseled so many people reading their charts and taking them through their year ahead. And, and just, I would tell people, even in my videos to my community, don't worry if things don't fully pan out this year. Don't try to resist. Don't try to push things to happen if they are not flowing because we're still in an energy of endings. We are not aligned with the cosmic clock yet to start new things. So I actually commend all of you here that have been, there are many of us that have been trailblazers and we are trailblazers. So it is our role to keep pushing through while everything else is crumbling down. So that is very beautiful. Um, however, there's something magical about understanding the key moments of action. And 2024 is one of them. So this is part of the good news that I have to share with you because 2023 wasn't. Neither was 2020 or 2021 So, or 2022. So this year now is where it all begins. Okay. And it really begins. We're already, we're already feeling right now. There is such a, a, a feeling sense of like newness coming in, a new energy, this sense of excitement that is coming in. And uh, that's because we're feeling more and more the new energies coming in. But there's going to be a window that is going to be the most powerful window of the whole year. <laughs> this is the window where I'm really uh, encouraging people to just, just go with it. Just follow your bliss. Follow everything you've been preparing for. Um, find your tribe. Allow yourselves to explore in the new energy. And this is a window that is from April till June of this year. And it doesn't mean that before or after we won't be accessing that. As a matter of fact, this is a year of new beginning. So the whole year will be the this new beginning, us calling in the new beginning, very, very beginning of the new beginning. Uh, there's a lot more to come. Okay. So don't think I have so many people that reach out to me with like these official this is the new currency coming in. Help me spread the word. This is the new law or this is the new. No, we're not there yet. I, I, as a matter of fact, I, I was just in a beautiful end of the year panel, um, the 2024 with many other astrologers. Alan Steinfeld was there too. And, you know, everybody was saying that they don't think that the elections are going to fully... Um, uh, that we're going to know by the end of this year who's going to be the president. So 
there may still be more to come. And I actually see this patch of the end of 2024 and the beginning of 2025 as really intense ones, really intense ones. So this is there's going to be a new stage of humanity pushing through, right? Because there is this birth that's happening. You can imagine a, a really a, a baby being born. And this is the baby of Aquarius the new model for earth and society. So we are in that stage of pushing, pushing, pushing. So we're still not over with that, but we are now aligned to call in the new. And April to June are the very best months for finding your tribe, finding partnerships and setting into motion Set, this is really an energy to set into motion your gifts, your plans, your partnerships. There's going to be a lot of people that are going to be collaborating together, new events, new retreats, new ideas, new books that people are going to be publishing or writing. And there's going to be a lot of energy now coming in, in this field of air. So what is air in astrology? We have the signs of Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius that belong to the air signs. And the air sign, actually, I'm just going to share with you here, the air sign also came in as a new paradigm for society a couple of years ago when we had a powerful, powerful conjunction of Saturn and Jupiter at exactly zero Aquarius out of all the signs and all the degrees it had to be zero Aquarius and Jupiter and Saturn they conjunct every 20 years and whenever they do they always bring a reset to society whether it's a mini or a max reset they bring a reset to society. So every 20 years. And then every 200 and something years, they change elements in where they conjunct. So the last 200 and something years, they've been conjuncting in, in earth signs. And that's why the last 200 and years have been ruled by so much earth dense energy. Everything's so dense. And sometimes I look at cars and how they pollute the environment. It's just like, ugh, so dense. And, you know, paper money and fossil fuels and all those, that, 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 the focus on earth, the earth resources and earth energies, very tangible. And now, now that Jupiter and Saturn began for the first time, their conjunction in air, denoting the next 200 and something years now, their resets in society are all going to be in the elements of air. So air is coming in now as another, another baseline to support our society. And so the energy of air is very different than earth. And this is partly where we're going to see society shift. You know, gone are the days of having to attend a public school. You know, Everything now is digital. Everything now is internet. And this is where we're also being given room to exercise this new awakening of consciousness that's coming in. Because with the air element, we are going to naturally be more in tune with telepathy, for example. And with energy in general, you're going to see that the vocabulary is going to shift. And whereas even five years ago, or even, you know, whatever, 10 years ago, it was like, people would look at you with this weird look in your face. If you talk to them about energy, if you say, Oh, I'm feeling the energy of this, you know, this cup of water, I feel the people look at you like, what are you? What are you smoking? Like, you're so weird. <laughs> well, guess what, that's going to be the new norm. Now, Everything's going to be perceived in energy. Our devices are going to be operated through, you know, now it's going to be solar energy and all these different aspects of energy that are coming in using laser technology and just technologies in general as well, which is going to be a new feature as well coming in in this new paradigm, especially of Aquarius. So air coming in the picture now is extremely important. We need to be mindful of that. And so not only we have the next 2000 years now coming in Aquarius, which is air, we have this other uh, new stage now that Jupiter and Saturn began officially giving us permission to reconstruct society for the next 200 and something years under the model of air. 
And so that's why we're going to see all aspects of the government, society, people, everything is going to shift to accommodate this new model. And then the beautiful, beautiful alignment of Pluto entering Aquarius. Now, the last time that Pluto entered Aquarius, this stirred a massive revolution all over the world. This is where everybody was ready to find their independence and freedom. Everybody wanted a voice. Everybody wanted the rights, the rights of this, the rights of that, and independence and freedom, and we're willing to fight for it. And, and then all the inventions, so many new inventions started to come in at that time because that's the energy of Aquarius. Aquarius is all about the new inventions. This is where technology comes in. This is where technology is a given in this stage of our, of our evolution. And this is why also we're seeing so much attention and curiosity in things like AI, other technologies, and also cosmic family, galactic origins. I mean, this is like the next big thing. It's so, so, so hot. It's such a hot topic. Because Aquarius is the sign as well of cosmic family. The Aquarius, the energy of Aquarius is the, the sign of Aquarius is symbolized by the what many, many people think of as water, but it's not water. That's why it's yellow. It's the stars. It's energy. It's the frequencies of the stars. And Aquarius symbolizes the stars. Out of all the 12 signs of the zodiac, the sign of Aquarius represents the cosmos. So this is really important to consider because this is a phase where the cosmos is opening to us. We are opening to the cosmos. I remember when I first met Neil, um, I don't know if you remember Neil, but I, I, I mentioned to you when I met you and I saw the incredible work you were doing. And I said to you, wow, you're right on time. <laughs> you're getting this wave right as it gains momentum to become the next big thing. You are fully supported. This is what people, this is what everybody's going to want to be looking for. is contact with the cosmos, contact with the stars, contact with galactic family, contact with aliens. And this is just the beginning. Just the beginning. Pluto's entering Aquarius in a few days. And from this moment forward, the next few weeks, months, years, we're going to hear all over the place news on new news on space, space travel that's now going to become accessible, some species, some, you know, some new aspect of the solar system. We discovered a new planet or all the stuff is going to start coming out so fast. And so I remember even uh, Alan Steinfield, I see you're here, my love. We went about, I think it was like a, a year ago or less than a year ago, we went to a, a grand opening of a, 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 a movie that Ron had produced on aliens. It's so, so impactful, incredible too. And I remember in that evening and others as well, there are many other events as well, but I remember that evening where people asked me all the time, what if what if, what if we get, what if we're persecuted for saying this? What if we, what if they want to kill us? What if they, those days are gone. And I tell everybody, rest assured, I am telling you this as cosmic law. Those days are done. You don't need to worry anymore. There is no fear or repression around your life or, or, or having to hold on to this information, a secret. No, is we're in a completely new paradigm. And as a matter of fact, now it's the in thing to talk about it. It's the in thing to help people connect with it and to see it. So there's no stopping now. We've left those, those ages. And so you don't need to worry about that anymore. If anything, this should give you conviction to step fully into it. So this paradigm of Aquarius is opening up very rapidly for us. And we have to embrace it for what it is. Even our concept of spirituality is shifting. And I encourage my community and everyone I speak to to dare to be different, including in spirituality. Because we are leaving the Piscean dream, which in many ways has helped and supported us grow and evolve until this point. But now we're ready to wake up, wake up to more, wake up to a new aspect of creator in physical form. 
This is why we are stepping into sovereignty and so many aspects of uh, strength and power and autonomy. You know, so it's all because of this energy of Aquarius that's here now. And this is no longer about the, the masters and the gurus and all the, the beautiful teachers that, you know, wear robes and wear the, I'm nothing against that, but it's the energy of the master and the teacher. No, we are all one living organism waking up together. And so the beautiful thing is that we are all figuring out that we are all uniquely valuable. We are all so different, but we need to work together. This is no longer about convincing others or having an established rule or paradigm. No, this is about seeing God in everything and everyone. And from that place, we respect, we create together. Aquarius is about humanity. Aquarius is about community. Aquarius is about the connection with everything, not just Gaia and people in Gaia, but the cosmos as well. So that web that we see so often, this is what we are awakening. This, this cosmic web, these dots of light that are coming together now as one awareness, powering up together. This is the new paradigm. This is the energy of Aquarius that is assisting our evolution now. This is why we are seeing so much emphasis on community. And this is not even about living in community. I remember tapping into this because I was born and raised in a cult and living with hundreds of people at any given time from the age of zero to age 27. And when I left, I was like, I don't understand why people want to live in community. <laughs> like they have no idea what they're talking about. It, it is not as simple as people think. But I, you know, for me, this, this idea of community is more the energetic understanding that we're all connected. And whether we, it's a town, and for example, here in Sedona, we are very much a community. Everybody has their different houses and work, but we all know each other. We're all a community. And we know that if we talk about one it's only a matter of time before other people hear it. It becomes gossip. We, we, we understand that everybody has different personalities, different roles as well. And this is what the community energy is about. It's about understanding the connection with everything and everyone. So to wrap this up here, because I know time flies. And <laughs> when, we, when I speak, I know we get in this vortex where it's just like, whoa, where am I? Where? It's already time? Whoa. Okay, so summarizing. April to June is where we are given the huge, big boost of acceleration to the air energy. So as Pluto enters Aquarius now in a few days, bringing revolution and freedom to our awareness, in April, from April to June, we have an acceleration of that energy. We have another catalyst moment that is going to bring breakthroughs for many. Things are going to start to accelerate so fast. People are going to be moving, shifting, taking next steps, all between this April and June phase. <clears throat> this is also where we receive an additional boost from Gemini, which is another air element. When this happens, it's going to activate Pluto and Aquarius. And this is going to send a signal to all to connect. This is where partnerships are going to be coming together. Very exciting ventures, new beginnings and people exploring their gifts with communication and teaching. So all of this is going to be really in focus in this period, so that from then on, from July and August and into the, the end of the year, we're going to have time to catch up with all the seeds that we've planted and all the connections that we made. And we're going to let the world sort itself out a bit. Um, you know, the dynamic astrologically is not as dark as it was last year. So I know that there's going to be big events playing out in the government and in the world. But as far as the personal excruciating pains of death and rebirth, we're in a new chapter. And so for us, it's really about looking forward. It's about understanding that we are graduating into a brand new spiritual purpose. So 2024 is all about that. This is what I want to encourage you with.